Today, we're putting two luxurious rivals head to head. The 2016 BMW 750i xDrive and the 2016 Mercedes S550 4Matic. The 7 Series has had a bit of a tough life. Overall, Mercedes outsells the BMW 7 Series 2 to 1, and part of that is because BMW is about the ultimate driving machine, not as much an elegant, luxurious masterpiece that Mercedes is known for. You know, when you think of BMW, you think of the BMW M3, and when you think of Mercedes, the S-Class comes to mind. But they have stepped the game up enormously for the 2016 complete overhaul. The 2016 Mercedes S550 is the top of the line Mercedes and perpetually this car through every single generation has always symbolized the top end luxury sedan. With a 4.7 liter turbocharged V8, this thing makes 449 horsepower and over 500 pound feet of torque. Despite weighing well over two tons, this thing is really fast. Now, every year, every generation, Mercedes gives their engineers a massive budget and tells them to go make the most advanced and best vehicle out there. So this car always pioneers the newest cutting edge, either luxury, safety, or just general convenience technologies, making this always one of the most advanced vehicles on the road. All of the new 7 Series are long wheelbase models. That's why this isn't the 750 IL, it's just the 750 I. The new engine, 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8, producing 445 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque. And despite weighing about the same as the Mercedes and being down on power due to its eight speed ZF transmission, it's able to hit 60 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds compared to the Mercedes at 4.7. The 7 Series now looks much better than before, and it's lighter too, thanks to a carbon core and elements from uh, the BMW i3 and i8, it is now 285 pounds lighter than the outgoing model. The updated angel eyes that are now squared off instead of completely round, some chrome accents, the 7 Series looks a lot better in the flesh than it does in pictures. From an exterior standpoint, the new S-Class is gorgeous. Everything flows together perfectly. The headlights are awesome. They have this nice LED daytime running light. Every light on this vehicle is an LED. There are no incandescent bulbs anywhere on this entire car. The three-pointed star up front just signifies luxury. And the way the front is designed with the larger grille, it actually looks like a much larger sedan than the 7 Series. We had the two of them parked right next to each other. And the first thing I noticed was, hey, the S-Class looks like it's actually bigger. Both of us think that the S-Class looks better. It flows nicer. And overall, Mercedes design language is great. The only problem is the new C-Class and the new E-Class look way too similar to the S-Class. They pretty much took the S-Class and just shrunk it down by 75% and then 50% and those are the new Mercedes sedans. And if you buy an S-Class, that could be a little bit irksome because of the fact that there's no really styling differentiation between the three anymore. Um, oftentimes we've driven by a C-Class and we're like, hey, is that an S-Class? Never mind, it's not an S-Class. The 7 Series is all about technology. It has everything that the S-Class offers and then more. It's got an LCD touchscreen climate control system. It's got a touchscreen smart key, which stores away in this compartment here. There's a wireless charging bay. It's a $250 option. and pretty much allows you to see if the car is unlocked, if the windows are open, a few other features that is pretty cool. It's also got gesture control, which we believe is the first car ever to feature that. I think so. It's a little bit gimmicky. It doesn't always work. I was mm -hmm. playing with it earlier, and sometimes it's really reliable, and sometimes it's not. But in essence, you can control the volume by scrolling with your finger. Yeah, and there's a few other ones that control like the cameras and such. To, uh, to be honest, it's almost as if it's just a new feature for you to show off to your friends. Absolutely. I think it would be so much easier just to go to the physical button or the <laughs> knob to do it. Doing this, it might not pick it up, it might be delayed, but it is And you look a little bit cool. like an idiot. <laughs> BMW, uh, the designers of BMW say that a luxury car is about having features that you didn't know you needed. Offering features for customers that I didn't know they wanted. So I don't know even after it's been offered that I do want the gesture control, <laughs> but, but I there. certainly before did not know that yeah. that was something I'd be interested in. Bragging rights. 
So another cool technology feature this car offers is the transmission, the way it's calibrated specifically. It uses the ZF 8-speed, but it has a way of deciding itself between comfort and sport mode. So it'll either read with GPS, if there are curves coming up, it'll probably go into sport mode for you, and then also it'll sample a three to five second interval of driver input, either uh, steering or throttle, and if it senses you're trying to go aggressive and it also sees the curves coming, it'll jump into sport mode automatically by itself. The only thing better than owning and driving a BMW 7 Series is owning and being driven in a BMW 7 Series, especially in the back. This has the executive rear seating package, which gives you endless legroom. You can move the uh, passenger seat from the rear. I've got massaging, heated, and cooled seats, and I've even got a tablet that has a ton of controls, anything from the lighting to the climate control. Uh, I can change the radio station, the volume, the shades, massage, very trick. We've also got a private jet or first class 747 style tray table uh, if you're interested in working on your laptop. Of course, this is going to be a preferred car of many businessmen and it certainly has the space and the luxury to even have a business meeting on the road. While the executive rear seat package is great for people sitting back there, something everyone can enjoy is the upgraded speaker system. Bowers and Wilkins, 16 speakers, 1400 watts, and these little speaker grills have LEDs in them that light up. So here are some of the things we love and hate about the new 7 Series. We love the technology. Yes. It's absolutely crazy between the tablet, the gesture control, the smart key, mm -hmm. touchscreen, everything. It did go above and beyond, and it has Eagles. more technology than the A8 or uh, the Mercedes. Yes, it does. Second off is the way it sounds and the way it performs. This actually is louder than the uh, Mercedes S550, which is rather subdued for having a big V8. And on paper, it actually is faster to 60 through a quarter mile and performs slightly better. Yeah, for when you're just driving down the road like this, it's just as quiet, but when you step on the gas, yeah. you get a nice V8 noise, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, sounds good. Third, the rear seat package is absolutely absurd. I think it's the short of like anything like a Bentley or a Maybach. The back there is unbelievably nice. Absolutely. Um, you have a lot of legroom, the seats recline. Headroom is actually not as generous as I thought it would be, but the technology makes up for it. Heated, cooled, massage seats, a fancy tablet that controls everything else. This, The back seat is the place to be in this vehicle. Lastly, we really dislike the door handles. Not the actual handles themselves, but the surrounding material. For a car that has brilliant and extremely high quality materials everywhere, leather and wood, it seems like it was a very large oversight because you're touching the door handle multiple times per day. So you grab this nice metal handle and then your fingernails and your fingers rub up against this terrible feeling of plastic. And it's the first thing I noticed when I opened it's the car, so like, bad Whoa. that even in a car that's brilliant, we wanted to tell you about yeah. it. So it, they should have absolutely made that out of leather or metal or something like that. Other than that, they did an excellent job with the new 7 Series and it really does deserve your consideration if you're looking for a big full-size luxury sedan. Absolutely. So we're going to hop in the S-Class, see how that compares, let you guys know. We're in the S-Class now and it's surprising how different it feels than the BMW. It feels much more old-fashioned Agreed. In, in the way that Bentley and Rolls-Royce, they don't care as much about cutting-edge technologies. It's more exquisite materials mm -hmm. and fine craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. It seems like they cared a lot more about the design language in the S-Class and making it feel like just a incredibly luxurious cabin than, than they did uh, in the BMW. That was about being cutting-edge. Yeah. The 7 Series this center console is the biggest place you see. It's just screen, screen, stacked on touch controls, buttons, stacked right there. While in the S-Class, there's this huge just piece of wood trim that just spans around pretty much the entire cabin. The There's the analog clock right there, you have your air vents there, and then a row of buttons. It is much more simplistic, and it flows way nicer. That's what I love about this car. I think everything is so well thought out. Mm -hmm. It's not just stuff tacked on to add more features. It's got dual 12.3 inch screens, which look fantastic. The graphics and the animations in the S-Class are at another level yeah. than the BMW 7 Series. Mm -hmm. The 7 Series, they did step up the game from the graphics before, which were pretty lame for a car that expensive. But 
still S Class when you type put in vehicle settings and you go to the interior lighting, it shows a picture of an S Class driving and the doors opening and the and air channels and it's just you can change ex many things. Far <laughs> superior. Now in the rear seat, as we said, it's not really a fair comparison yeah. because this car does not have the executive rear seating package. So maybe we need to test one uh, that's more fair. But legroom, very, very similar. Headroom, more. there's actually more yeah. in the S-Class mm -hmm. uh, than the 7 Series. Even with, you think, with the executive rear seating package where you're slouched down a bit, more laying down, you'd think there'd be more, but there right. just isn't. The only redeeming factor of this not having the uh, executive rear seat package is you have five seats in the car instead of four. Absolutely. Yep. Now with space, the trunk in the S-Class, oh, yes. far superior. It Way is bigger. so much larger. The the 7 Series, there's a big spare tire and a cover that goes over it. So there's a little bit of extra usable space and like a little container. But the floor of the trunk is probably a good three to four inches higher than the tr floor of this one. And it just yeah, way less cargo I'm kind of surprised yeah. how small the 7 Series cargo space is. In terms of ride quality, we both think that the S-Class rides a little bit better and is more isolated yes. from wind noise, road noise. It's a more serene experience. We literally just went back to back, got out of the 7 Series and are driving this right now. And this is, maybe it's the seats, maybe it's the suspension setup, but they both have air suspension that's adjustable, but I think this is more refined, a um, little quieter, more isolated from the road, and it does ride smoother. And that doesn't uh, eliminate the handling characteristics of this car. It's still, when you put it in sport mode, handles just as good, if not maybe even a little better, than the 7 Series. So it handles really well in sport mode. It does is, handle pretty well for a car this large. It also drifts like a monster in it the does, snow. It does <laughs> drift well in snow. This is also interesting because the BMW has a camera that reads the road and if it sees bumps or potholes, it'll tell the suspension to adjust so you're supposed to minim, minim, you're not supposed to feel the bumps as much. The Mercedes S-Class offers it, but apparently it only offers it on the rear wheel drive model. Given this is the 4Matic, this actually does not have magic body control. So you would expect it would ride slightly worse than the 7 Series, but from our experience, it seems the opposite of that. I think it's it's hard to say which one I like more. I, I think it really... Vehicles. I don't think either one is better than the other, to be honest. They perform about the same, yes. similar gas mileage. They do luxury in kind of different ways. It, it really depends on the type of car you would want then. I think personally to me, I enjoy the, the cutting edge technology stuff. I almost like the 7 Series interior more. That appeals to me. I like all the crazy features. Whereas you might enjoy this, it's more simplistic, it's more relaxing. Yeah, I think this car is more elegant. It looks more beautiful on the road. The interior, I think, you can't argue that this interior isn't more beautiful no. than the BMW. No, not at all. But the BMW's interior is cooler. Yes. So if you are, I would say, honestly, a younger buyer, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna be more interested in the 7 Series. Yes. It's more futuristic, yes. modern, got the cutting edge technology. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a reason other than the price, of course, that most buyers of this car are older. Yes. Uh, it, it suits that clientele a little bit better. But overall, honestly, we can't really pick a winner. I guess I say that um, I like the S-Class more. Now, if I had to choose the 7 Series the way it's specced as it is versus probably this, I'd series. probably choose the 7 Series, yeah. but it's not fair because it's got $11,000 of options yes. that if you put it in this, then it'd be more competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and then you choose the 7 Series. I think I would go with the 7 Series. The the looks are starting to grow on me. Initially, when it launched, I wasn't a fan of it in pictures, but seeing it in person and seeing the interior, I do think I like the 7 Series more. Well, with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Special thanks to Mike Schaefer from Grand Blank Motorcars in Grand Blank, Michigan for supplying the 7 Series, and I happen to actually have gotten this S-Class from there as well. Of course, it's my personal vehicle. I look forward to seeing you next video. Two thousand and sixteen Mercedes S six hundred Pullman May Buck. The fiftieth birthday of the best known Pullman sedan of them all.
the Mercedes-Benz 600, is set to coincide with a special debut at the 2015 Geneva Motor Show, the launch of the new Pullman. Mercedes Maybach's second model will assume the top of the range position, with VZRV seating in the passenger compartment and high-end automotive luxury that is traditionally associated with Maybach. Its length of 21.3 feet alone is a sign of the special status of the Mercedes Maybach Pullman. It provides space for a generously sized and tastefully appointed club lounge in the rear, which has a multitude of creature comforts fitted as standard. This chauffeur-driven limousine is more than equal to today's demands for the ultimate in exclusivity and luxury. The VIP occupants sit on two standard specification executive seats facing the direction of travel. They can enjoy the greatest legroom in the segment, and can get into and out of the car with the greatest of ease and comfort. As is typical for a Pullman, the four passengers can sit facing each other in the compartment with an electrically operated partition window. The prices for unarmored models start at around half a million euros as of mid-February 2015. 500,000 euro the first customers will be taking delivery of their vehicles, which of course offer unrivaled scope for individualization, at the beginning of 2016. Many governments, rulers and royal families around the world have for decades chosen Mercedes-Benz sedans with the designation Pullman to drive them with the stateliness and style befitting their status. With its new model, the company is now extending its unique position in this demanding segment, quite apart from providing stately and stylish seating for high-ranking passengers in the comfort and spaciousness for which it is famed, the new Mercedes Maybach Pullman is of course the embodiment of exclusivity at its highest level, commented Ola Kalanius, member of the Daimler AG management board responsible for sales and marketing of Mercedes-Benz cars. One can sense the significance and greatness of it in every detail. The Mercedes Maybach Pullman provides extremely spacious seating combined with unique features characterized by their extraordinary and perfect craftsmanship. It goes without saying that Mercedes Maybach offers its customers unique opportunities to individualize the appointments of their top-class limousines. The exquisite Maybach paint finishes, which are applied in several layers, count as part of this specification. With a length of 21.3 feet the Pullman is another 3.5 feet longer than the Mercedes Maybach S-Class. The wheelbase is an impressive 14.5 feet. Furthermore, at 5.2 feet in height, the Pullman is more than 3.9 inches higher than the Mercedes S-Class, resulting in a tangible increase in headroom. The absolute top of the range model is the Mercedes Maybach Pullman S600. Its V12 by turbo engine has an output of 390 kW, with displacement of 5,900.